West Ham United 2, Manchester United 0. Craig Burley, is that even a shock result anymore? No, nothing is a shock with this United side. And, and some of our viewers have this notion that I only appear on FC either on digital or on the uh, live show in the United States when Man United lose. But it's, be it's becoming quite difficult not to appear on it when Man United mm. lose because... Uh, yeah, that was not a surprise. Nothing's a surprise at the moment. I mean, I could accept last week <clears throat> going to Anfield. You can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them where you are, disarray, under pressure, a team that is going well this season in Liverpool. So I, I, could, I can accept <clears throat> the uh, dogged defensive display, but some of the recent performances, Mark, you know, that's no goals in, in four Premier League games. Mm -hmm. They have a striker in Rasmus Hoyland who who may turn out to be a, a, a very good player down the line but can't score a Premier League goal. And it's not all down to him. You know, there's not a lot of supply. But we did have Bruno Fernandes back in today for that reason. That never materialised. And let's just, let's just get to the crux of it. Manchester United are absolutely freaking abysmal. Right, they are absolutely abysmal. If we, I mean, we have a manager who has no idea now. It seems what he's doing. We have a geriatric defence. We have a dodgy goalkeeper. We have a striker who can't score. We have experienced midfielders that are signed on the bench. We are turning to youngsters, and I'm not blaming the youngsters for any of this. And no young minor made a mistake. But he's a very good young player. Uh, and then we have this partial investment from Jim Ratcliffe and Enios uh, that seems to be taking absolutely forever. It's next week and it's next week and it's next week and the whole show is just a continuation of the shambles it's been all year. Okay, how did it get to this stage? I no idea. You know, last year was quite positive. We could come on and we could be a wee bit positive about Man United mm -hmm. and say Carabao Cup win against Newcastle. Wasn't a great performance in the top four. Some consistency sorted the Ronaldo situation out. Recovered from a very bad start to the season, particularly that heavy loss at Brentford. Uh, seemed to be really strong management in place and how to deal with the players. And then we've had, you know, the Greenwood situation scenario, which was a mess. We have the ongoing Sancho situation, which is a mess. We've had the Martial and the Rashford scenario in terms of attitude, which is a mess. Uh, and Marcus Rashford, who had the season of his life uh, last year, has has retracted to the means. He's back to the I couldn't can't be asked. You know, I've got my new contract. I've got my I got my money. You know, and that's how it looks. And he may he may say otherwise, but that's how it looks. And you know, so many wasters at this club now. And I think it's. It's difficult to say this is solely on the manager. But a big chunk of it, as you well know, we've both been covering this game for a long time. The buck always stops with him. And I, I, I never thought I'd be sat here around Christmas time 2023 after the season United had last year and say, this almost looks like a complete clear out again. And I include the manager in this. Uh, so... It's a real shambles. And when you've got people like Jaden Sancho, who, by the way, I think must think he's the greatest player and the greatest thing since sliced bread, refusing to apologise, it seems, to be back involved. How's that helping his career? How's that helping anybody? So, so many problems at this football club. And, you know, one of the main things is, on top of that, the football that we're having to watch and that the United fans are paying big money are having to watch. The football's dire. I mean, come on. They've been outplayed this season by almost every team in the Premier League. Almost every team. Doesn't matter where you are in the league. They've been outplayed by almost every team. What do you do with Ten Hag? Do you get rid of him and have someone else come in to the chaos that you've just laid out? Or do you look for another way to resolve this because you've got to start somewhere they did they have been chaotic before they fixed it but now they're back where they were i'd say they've gone beyond back where they were 
Uh, it, it's you know I, I really I, I really don't I really don't have the answer. I think the manager's struggling big time. Uh, but I think there's a playing staff now as well that uh, this group of players take the youngsters out. This senior group of players look very much to me as if they're 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 going to be good for you when things are going well. They're, they're they'll perform in the main and they'll turn up, but they don't seem to be a group that in adversity either don't want to or don't know how to roll the sleeves up and dig themselves and the manager out a difficult period. Uh, and maybe that was the the uh, the will that was pulled over everybody's eyes last season, that when it started to go better and, uh, and, and when it was going better last year, everybody was on the same, same hymn sheet. And this season it's not, and it is extremely fractured. And I, I think they've probably just got a bad group of players in terms of personalities and, and not enough leaders, not enough strong characters, not enough good players. And I really don't have the answer. I, I you know, I, I don't think I'd say nobody wants this job because I imagine saying that about Man United. It should who'd be want, the job. It should be. But who'd want to come in and <clears throat> with this group of players unless they had so many guarantees and say, you know, because they're, they're crucifying almost every manager. You know, if we take Oli Gunnar Solskjaer out of the equation, he was an interim, he should never have been in the job. He actually did okay for a period, but some very very experienced managers have been in there, including the guy that beat them today. And they've all been crucified. Uh, so it's a real difficult one, but they're, they're in a real bad spot. I mean, a real, real bad spot. Look, there'll be West Ham fans watching this if they're still tuned in. Saying, By the way, we won 2-0. Yeah, I know. And we'll get to you deservedly so. And we'll give you the praise that you deserve for signing someone like Mohamed Kudus from Ajax for 43 million, nearly half of what Manchester United paid for Anthony, who they probably could have had for half of what West Ham paid for Kudus. So it, it just seems there are issues throughout. Look, we could easily do an hour special on Manchester United and their issues, but this is about West Ham to Manchester United nil. And I think you very succinctly put forward the case and the issues that Manchester United have right now. What about West Ham? It wasn't too long ago. Some West Ham fans were saying, don't like the style of play. Moyes, not not for me, someone else. We've got to be careful what we wish for here. I think so, but I can understand that 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 argument to an extent. Uh, how much do results overweigh a, a style that can be frustrating? But there's no doubt the results have been excellent. They are Europa Conference champions. Uh, they are top of the Europa League group. They've moved, I think, to sixth place uh, with this result. They are rock solid. Uh, nobody will even talk about them in terms of relegation, and they have been relegated in recent years. So uh, it's a difficult one. Look, if the first 65 or 70 minutes, whatever it was, to, to Lucas Pakitar for just that moment of brilliance, if that had been an appetizer for Christmas, that game, then Christmas is closed. <laughs> Christmas was shut down. You know, all it needed was Santa to come down with his reindeers and put 22 of those players in the sleigh and take them off and spare us the rest of the game. It was that bad. But but Pakita, as we know, he was going to go to Man City and he got embroiled in some, some stuff that scuppered that move. He's a terrific individual. It must be frustrating for him at times in a, in a team that, Sometimes has what 35, 40 percent possession, but yeah. himself and Jared Bowen and Mohamed Kudos, as you mentioned, uh, Edson Alvarez, you know, did a great job again. James Ward Prowse, uh, rock solid. You know, a couple of these guys missed out in a uh, League Cup quarter final in midweek, where the criticism came West Ham's way again when they were really poor at Anfield. So it is a difficult one because David Moyes has done a great job there, but. The style of play is, is what it is, but uh, I don't think you can even talk about replacing a manager who is getting out of this side, what he's getting out of. There's, there's, there's no doubt about that. That's his way of doing it, and, and that's, gonna, that's not going to change now. Is there an element of snobbery among fans? And I'm not just talking about West Ham fans. I'm talking about fans of 
of any team, whether it's me as a Hearts fan wanting us to play with inverted fullbacks like Manchester City, and you're like, steady on here, West Ham, who are up to sixth as a result of this, but we're not playing this world-class football. Sometimes you've just got to accept that this is who we are, this is the manager that we've got, and if he's getting results, then keep your gob shut. Well, there is a little bit about it, of it, but there's no doubt the game has changed as well in the way, yeah. the way that it has played. It's very much stretched these days and there's a lot more space for teams to, to go and play. And uh, there is that, but the, the, and, and I think everybody wants to, to and sees the way Liverpool have played in Arsenal, sure. particularly Manchester City and Barcelona back in the day when it was their current manager, Xavi, who's under pressure, but that great Barca side. But I think there is an element of the paying public now. Are, the ticket prices are so expensive. The they have all these beautiful new venues, particularly in the Premier League, but generally around most of Europe now. And and I think the 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 diehard supporter now just demands more. You know, the days of the goalkeeper welling up the field mm. every two minutes and two big strikers go and have a fight for it is is well and truly gone. And I think whilst we see some teams that play a different style, I, I think there is definitely an element of the supporter understanding a bit more now and demanding a, a little bit more. More of a, we could call it, it's more, it's more of an entertainment now. And I think supporters demand more than they used to to be entertained. Now, interject that with results. It is still a results business. But I think there is a little bit of snobbery, but, uh, but I think people just want to see good football these days and uh, the way of the world some teams can just do it better than others but but I think West Ham get a little bit of both I just sometimes think they are a little bit defensive but that's kind of worked for David Moyes all over his very yeah. successful decade plus at Everton when he took Everton into the Champions League at, at one point FA Cup finals and, and other sort of successes and I think that's the way that this team operates Six hours, 21 minutes that's yeah. how long it's been since Scott McTominay scored Manchester United's last goal. So they're looking for a nice, easy fixture next. And they've got Aston Villa. Yeah, and I was uh, I was heavy on why they didn't go for Harry Kane in the summer and why they went out and they splodged on a goalie. They splodged on a loan for Amrabat. They splodged on Mason Mount, quite big money. They spent on Hoyland, and I was like, well, and I get it, oh, we don't want to deal with Daniel Levy, we don't want to be blah, blah, blah. Look, they needed, they needed top quality at, at, at the business end of the field. They, did, they didn't pursue that, they pursued a youngster. And while it's not all down to him, my God, Harry Kane has won, shortly winning the lottery. <laughs> uh, it must be the best thing ever that Man United showed no interest in and, and dealing with Daniel Levy and the hundred million plus that it was going to cost, and he hot foots it to Bayern Munich. The scoring goals for fun, and you know they've got a title race on there. But but yeah, it's it's the signings in the summer straight away. Mark were were strange, and, and this is not hindsight. We sat in the FC studio and said, "Yep." Uh, we said Casemiro can't get around the field. Mason Mount is not a natural midfielder. And Bruno Fernandes, now that was the initial three ball. That's not going to work. And it didn't. And since then, it's been a change and a mishmash of, of others. And McTominay, you mentioned, he was, listen, McTominay was going to be nothing else than, than surplus to requirements. Yeah. But all mm -hmm. these players were fit. And it turns out he's been the one digging Ten Hag out of some of the holes. So, I've never quite got even the signings in the summer uh, and how that was going to take them forward and how how it was necessary to really go after aggressively Mason Mount, who is a good player. He's a good player. But there were so many other departments, I felt, that needed to be addressed. Finally, Craig, I, I think you can maybe sum up this game by saying the front three of West Ham, could us? Paquita, and of course Jared Bowen against the front three of Manchester United, Garnacho, Anthony and Hoyland. I don't think you take one of those Manchester United players and replace him 
with any of those three West Ham players, do you? No, you don't. And Jared Bowen's been playing in false nine. You know, he's, yeah. he's not even a you know he's not a, a natural striker. So clearly, he's a wide player. But no, you don't. You don't. You take that front three at the moment all day. And, and I kind of think that's if you're putting a Man United side, uh, putting a Man United eleven together with the top five or six in the Premier League or what we would consider the elite teams really going for the Champions League, I, I think you'd really struggle to to shoehorn any of them in. And I, I, and I include Bruno Fernandes in that. I know, I know he's a good player, but you know he whinges and he moans and he's on the ground and he's rolling around. And you know I just, I, I just think you struggle to shoehorn any of them in. And, and on top of that, there's not a lot of great characters in there as well. And there's a lot of people that look to blame to blame others. And I think they're all going to sit back and, and wait for the manager to fall. I think ultimately, as we sit here now, I think that's what's going to happen. Uh, I think this manager's going to fall on his sword uh, very soon at this rate. And, uh, and uh, good luck to the next incumbent. I think we just don't know who it is, but I think the Christmas message to the next Manchester United manager, whenever that is, and that looks like it's going to be quite soon, is Merry Christmas and good luck. <laughs>